In this video, I'm just going to introduce the multiple linear regression model. So recall the simple linear regression model. We had yi equals beta naught plus beta one x sub i plus epsilon sub i for i equals one to n, okay? Where y was our response variable and x was our predictor variable. Okay, and we had beta naught and beta one are our parameters. So we had two parameters. Okay, and in the multiple linear regression model, what's gonna be different is that we're gonna have more than two parameters. So for example, the multiple linear regression model will look like yi equals beta naught plus beta one times x one so x1 is one of our uh, predictor variables, okay? So the ith of that x1 plus beta2 times x2, where x2 is another predictor variable, and this is the ith, of, ith observation of that predictor variable, plus all the way until I get to beta k, xk, okay? This is the kth predictor variable plus epsilon sub i, okay? So i is still going from one to n, all right? And so I have here, I have one, two, all the way to k, I have k predictor variables. So up here I only had one predictor variable, but now I have k predictor variables, right? Versus in the simple linear regression model, all I had was one predictor variable. All right, and then how many parameters do I have? I have one, two, all the way to k plus one, because remember I have this intercept, so I'm gonna end up having k plus one parameters, okay? So the uh, k plus one parameters, a lot of times this is called p. So p equals k plus one, and that's the number of parameters, okay? So k predictor variables, p parameters, and p is just k plus one. All right, so this is a multiple linear regression model. Well, what about if I had, say I only had one predictor uh, variable, but I wanted to take it uh, and include the square of that predictor variable in my model, okay? Is this a multiple linear regression model? Okay, well it involves a square, so a lot of times students get a little tripped up by that and they think, oh wait, is this linear, right? And it's quadratic in x, but it's linear in beta, right? So beta, that's what I'm interested in. So yes, this is a multiple linear regression model, okay? It is linear in beta, right? Uh, another type of model you might see is something like yi equals beta naught plus beta one, x1i, so I have one predictor variable, I have another pred predictor variable, x2i, and then I include in another x1i times x2i, okay? This is called an, an interaction, right? I'm looking for an interaction term, okay? And so I see I have multiplication, so once again, I might be you know, thinking that this isn't linear, but if I look at my betas, I'm still linear in beta. So this is a linear regression line, okay? Uh, also, you might see some transformations, such as the ln of yi equals beta naught plus beta one times the ln of x1i plus beta two times one over x2i. So I have lots of transformations of my variables, right? But nothing's happening to beta, so I still am linear in beta, so still a multiple linear regression line, okay? What about if I had something like yi equals uh, one over uh, one plus, actually instead of one, this is beta o, so the intercept, or beta naught, uh, plus one plus uh, e to the power of negative beta one x one i plus beta two x two i plus beta three, x three i, okay? 
plus a model error term. Okay, is this a multiple linear regression? Well, no, because it's no longer linear in beta. Beta is up here in the exponent. It's also sp split uh, as part of a fraction, right? So this is definitely not a linear relationship in beta. This is not a multiple linear regression line. Okay? All right, so it's important we understand what does it mean to be linear. It means that we're linear in beta, not linear in x, or not linear in y. Okay, so this is my multiple linear regression model here, okay? And writing this all out like this, it take, it's time consuming. So what we do is we, we end up using matrix notation, okay? So we're gonna rewrite this model using matrix notation, and then we'll probably never write it really out like this again. So how do I write this using matrix notation? What I want to do is I'm going to define some matrices and some vectors. So first, uh, I'm going to have a vector here of my outcomes or my response variables. So all of my response variables, I'm going to stack them on each other, y1 through yn. Those are my response variables. This is an n by 1 vector. Next, I have my design matrix. My design matrix is 1s. Okay, That's for the intercept then all of my first uh, predictor variables stacked on top of each other. So my first, oh, this would be the first one, this would be the second one, all the way to x sub i n. Okay, so this is my first predictor variable stacked on top of each other for all of my observations. Then my second predictor variable, x sub 2, 2, all the way to x sub 2 n, all the way through to x sub k 1, x sub k, to, so my kth predictor variable, x sub k n, okay? And the dimensions of this matrix, okay? I have k predictor variables, and then I also have this first row of ones. So that's a k plus one columns, right? So that's p. So this is n by p, right? Beta is beta naught, beta one, all the way through, beta k, okay? Once again, I have p parameters. This is a p by one, right? p is k plus one for the intercept. All right, and then lastly, I have my model errors, which is just all of my model errors stacked on top of each other, okay? And this is n by one, okay? So using this matrix notation, I can write my model as y equals x beta plus epsilon. Right, and the way I would write my model assumptions now is the expected value of epsilon equals zero, where this is a vector of n by one uh, zeros, and then the variance of epsilon equals sigma squared times i, where i is n by n, it's the index matrix, right, and it's ones in the diagonal and then zeros everywhere else. So basically, it's saying the exact same thing, that the variances of these, uh, these errors are, are sigma squared, and the covariances are zero. So they're uncorrelated error terms. Okay? All right, so there you have it. This is, our, this is the way we're going to write our multiple linear regression model. All right, lastly, before I'm done with this video, I want to talk about interpreting these beta terms. Uh, it's not as straightforward as when we only had uh, one predictor variable, right? Back in the good old day when we only had one predictor variable, we used to be able to plot x and y, and we would say, okay, beta, what that is, is basically the slope, right? It's no big deal. That makes sense. Well, when you have more than one a uh, predictor variable, it gets a little more complicated because the way you would have to interpret each of these betas is you would have to hold all the other x's constant while you're interpreting that particular beta. Okay, so when you plot it like this, when you plot your observations, uh, you're not holding the other ones constant unless your data was collected in a very specific beautiful way where you were able to do that. You may, I mean, your data may be collected so that you're able to plot x and y uh, and where you're holding all the other x's constants when you're doing that plot. But in most cases, that's not going to be the case. 
okay? So when you plot x and y for, you know, one of these x's, it's, it's a little more difficult to interpret when you have a multiple linear regression model. All right, so let me go ahead and basically write down what I just said. So we have these betas. These are called uh, the partial uh, regression coefficients, okay? All right, so for example, beta one is the expected change in uh, our response, okay, and so in y per unit change in x1, right, if that's beta 1, then this is corresponding to that first uh, predictor variable x1 with other x's held constant. Okay, so with other x's held constant, that is key. All right, and that's very important that we understand that um, when we're interpreting the betas, we have to hold all the other x's constant while we're doing that interpretation.